Kirk Fletcher here for Premier Guitar, and this is called Hooked. And this is the riff and the song that really got me hooked on guitar. You know, other than my older brother playing and getting me started with it and everything. This was the riff in this song by the Dixie Hummingbirds that got me so into learning. And there's a story here. You know, I'm, I come from a really religious background and I couldn't really listen to um, secular music. I could only listen to Christian music at the time when I was like eight or nine years old. So there was, um, you know, our church, my father was a pastor and we would go to other churches sometimes and there would be, you know, young people, musicians and things like that. And me being an eight, nine year old kid, I was always eager to plug in, plug my guitar in, play some, you know, and just try and, you know, whatever. I was totally just thinking in my own world, just trying to get better at guitar, you know, so there was this other evangelist uh, that played guitar, um, Evangelist Nelson. And, uh, you know, we fellowship with them, you know, and stuff like that. You know, and this is really fun musical church we would go to, you know. And, um, you know, so I was playing and thinking I was hot stuff and everything like that. You know, and I learned a very valuable lesson, you know, at this one particular service. Uh, you know, I was playing and everything like that. And then he started to play. The thing was, I was like, oh, man, you know, I can keep up with this old guy or whatever, you know, in my silly little nine-year-old mom, <laughs> you know. But what happened was we were playing, and he started playing the solo to Bedside of a Neighbor by the Dixie Hummingbirds, you know. And the, the people, the congregation in church just went crazy because I learned something. It was something that they could connect to. It was something that they could feel, you know, and they knew about that. They knew about that song and it was a famous guitar solo in the church, you know, religious music. And a lot of musicians I've talked to, like the great Arthur Adams, said he listened to the guitar player Howard Carroll. You know, and he grew up listening to the Dixie Hummin' Burks and so many guys. I think I saw an interview about uh, Russell Malone having a similar experience with that too. You know, the great jazz guitar player, Russell Malone. You know, and a lot of us guys, you know, out of the church, you know, in the quartet gospel scene and all that, you know, they were sort of like the guys, you know, and Howard Carroll played these beautiful chords and these introductions, you know, to like, thank you for one more day and different things like that. He played these beautiful chords and, you know, little lead lines and stuff like that, you know, and it swung really hard. You know, you take a solo like that and it's almost like, it's like almost like rockabilly in a way that I didn't know anything about rockabilly or, you know, swing music or anything like that at eight, nine years old. You know, and this solo and this approach to this song also served me well when I would later play with guys like Linwood Slim in the West Coast jump blues scene, you know, because I was already kind of aware of some of these sounds from the Dixie Hummingbirds. And the um, cassette that I first heard this on was this one. It was a cassette of this, The Best of the Dixie Hummingbirds. And I would definitely advise if you want to know about, uh, you know, gospel guitar, swinging guitar, fantastic singing, Ira Tucker, one of my favorite singers of all time. You know, in this lick, this solo really changed the game for me. Once I learned it, it was one of the first solos where I sat down and really learned the guitar solo because I had to because I was upstage by this evangelist, evangelist Nelson. So, you know, it was like I had to try and, you know, learn this. And it just sent me down this path of learning guitar solos. And then later there would be people like, Obviously, Jimi Hendrix and Prince guitar solos and Jesse Johnson from the time, you know, and Stevie Ray Vaughan, ultimately, you know, who kind of really changed things up for me once I got a little bit older. But before all those guys, it was Howard Carroll with the Dixie Hummingbirds, you know, the solos kind of like... <laughs> You know, I 
mean, you got so many different things in there. And I would later, you know, get into... You know, I would get into stuff like that, but it all started right there with that solo and learning how to do that. You know, I would play this song called Lonesome Train with Linwood Slim, you know, and it had a lot of that kind of stuff in there. You know, and listening to Junior Watson and a lot of the West Coast guys, Hollywood fats and stuff like that, it really went together. I could see it, you know, broad daylight. I could see that there was this connection between these two. So, you know, I just wanted to take a little time. I'm so happy Premier Guitar asked me to do this hook series. It's fantastic. I'm honored. I love the magazine and everybody there. I'm a big fan of it. So thank you so much. And this is Hooked. Dixie Hummingbirds. <laughs>